Good morning to you. While the media tries to suppress the story, the Hunter Biden email saga is only getting more salacious and more interesting. Here's Rudy Giuliani over the weekend describing what Hunter Biden texted his daughter. Well, he's writing to his daughter here. This is Hunter Biden to his daughter. He says, but I don't receive any respect, and that's fine, I guess. Works for you, apparently. I hope you all can do what I did and pay for everything for this entire family for 30 years. It's really hard, but don't, wor- don't worry. Unlike Pop, I won't make you give me half your salary. What? The Biden family has been relying on their drug-addled son for their resources? We'll find out more about this now with Joe DeGeneva, a legal analyst and former U.S. attorney to the District of Columbia, joins us now. Joe, good morning. Morning. A lot of details transpiring here. What do you find the most important? Well, uh, the, the most important theme is the, is the overarching scheme. This is a decades-old pay-to-play scheme involving monetizing Joe Biden's public office for the benefit of the family, which then kicks back money to Joe in the form of buying houses, uh, cars, uh, other things of substantial value, homes. And it's not his money, quote unquote, so he doesn't report it. So his modest lifestyle with all these grandiose accoutrements ends up looking like, where did this come from? And the answer is, we now know that Hunter Biden has been a money machine for his father, but he's done so as a result of using his father's public office and the influence of his father to get clients, to get meetings with his father, and then to enrich the family. This is bribery and conspiracy. Rudy Giuliani is absolutely correct. This is a crime family. What's fascinating to me is, here's the question of the week for me. What did the FBI not do, and when did they not do it? Because they have possession of Hunter Biden's computer or knowledge of it as early as September 2019, uh, when Albuquerque Office of the FBI is notified of the existence and some of the contents of the computer. So what did the FBI do? We know that Christopher Wray was the FBI director starting on August 2nd, 2017. What did Christopher Wray do? Don't tell me that Christopher Ray wasn't notified that this material was in the possession of the FBI. This is an amazing story. Uh, the one thing that puzzles me more than anything else is why the New York Post has not sued Twitter. Uh, it's, it's a great case. I'd love to have it in my bank of cases. Hmm. You know, all of this, Joe, is just so disheartening and so maddening because I think we all know that what what happened here. I think we know that the FBI sat on this in order to cover for Joe Biden. Uh, I think we all know that uh, should anything come of this. If, if Trump wins and anything comes at this and there is some kind of an investigation, no one will know anything. Those who may have been involved were all low-level employees. They're going to retire uh, right away so that nothing happens to them. Heads will never roll. And there'll be no – I don't know if there'll ever be any kind of investigation into Joe Biden himself. But if Joe Biden doesn't win, this dies. We're done. This, this was held long enough. They sat on the ball long enough to be able to stall it from ever seeing the light of day. They hoped it was never going to see the light of day. It came out, but they've, they've successfully squashed it long enough. For, this is a non-story as far as the election goes. Am I right? Uh, it's part, it could be. I'm, I'm not sure. It depends on what some of the other revelations will be over the next couple of weeks. But there's definitely uh, this story was buried by the FBI. Make no mistake about it. Uh, somebody in the Department of Justice as well uh, at the time knew about this. Remember, Bill Barr doesn't become attorney general until February of 2019. And this stuff is percolating a few months after that. Was this information kept from Bill Barr? Uh, It's fascinating. Uh, It's just really fascinating. But the problem is you, you can't make a story big when the mainstream media refuses to cover it. And so, therefore, the election becomes more important than anything else so that the investigation of this can continue when President Trump wins his second term. Can you take us into the existence of this grand jury subpoena uh, by the U.S. Attorney's Office in the District of Delaware for this uh, hard drive? What does that mean to you that they obtained uh, this information through a grand jury subpoena? Well, what happens is uh, the owner of the computer shop goes to the FBI, tells them about it, 
And then he gets a grand jury subpoena and gives them copies of the hard drive. There are four copies of the hard drive, two of which the owner of the repair shop keeps. Uh, the FBI and the U.S. Attorney's Office in Delaware get, get at least one of the other copies. So the question becomes, what did the FBI in Delaware and the U.S. Attorney in Delaware do with the information? At this point, we certainly know there were no indictments. We do not know if there was a grand jury appearance, although we have been told that the shop owner did appear before a grand jury. Uh, but we have, you know, that's as far as it goes. Who in Washington was informed of the existence? You know that the FBI, right. which is highly potty trained about things like this, told the headquarters in Washington, D.C. And nobody's going to tell me that Christopher Ray didn't know about it. So there's a chain of command. And if this was turned over, which it was, and it was subpoenaed, that means that the government had lawful possession of this computer hard drive. Now let's find out what did they do with it. You know, Joe, there is another tranche of emails, 26,000 emails that were provided to Peter Schweitzer yes. by a former business partner of Hunter Biden, who is now serving time. His name is uh, Bevan Cooney, provided these 26,000 emails to um, to Schweitzer a couple of weeks ago, back at the end of uh, September. Are, do the, are those, do we know if those emails also are on that hard drive or is this something totally separate? It may very well be that some of those 26,000 emails on Bevan and Cooney's computer are on the Hunter Biden computer. It would be unusual if they were not, since they were all talking and emailing to each other about various business deals which they were involved in. Uh, by the way, Bevan Cooney is in prison. Uh, Devin Archer has just had his conviction reinstated by the Second Circuit Court of Appeals. He's about to be sentenced. That was Hunter Biden's partner, Devin Archer. So there's more to come, but it's all going to play out over a longer period of time. Certainly, most of this will not be known before the election. But yes, I'm, I'm quite sure that the Bevin Cooney emails contain some of the Hunter Biden 40,000 emails. Okay. More with uh, Joe DeGeneva in just a moment. He'll uh, stay with us because we have more questions about uh, a big scandal showing up in October of an election year involving Hunter Biden and Joe Biden. We've known about this relationship for a while, obviously, father and son, but the uh, the nature of their relationship is now becoming even more clear in terms of uh, corrupt business dealings. It's deeply important uh, for assessing a presidential candidate. We'll keep doing that with Joe, with, uh, Joe DeGeneva in just a moment. 7.15 now. Talking to Joe DeGeneva and Joe, we've got uh, Senator Ron Johnson said in a letter this weekend, the FBI has declined to provide any insight into its handling of the laptop belonging to Hunter Biden. Uh, in fact, they said they could not confirm nor deny any information identified by the committee, uh, even though several of our questions were not related to the possible existence of an ongoing grand jury investigation. This is Senator Ron Johnson saying that. And then I see this report, Joe, over the weekend that the FBI is actually doing something. They're looking into whether foreign operatives aided the release of Hunter Biden's emails. According to the Associated Press and NBC News, the only leaks we're getting out of the FBI suggest that they want to see if they can turn this into a Russian disinformation campaign rather than tell us whether or not the vice president of the United States was corrupt. Do I have that right? You do. And it raises troubling questions once again about Christopher Ray, the current FBI director. Let's review. The FBI protected Hillary Clinton under James Comey's leadership and refused to prosecute a case against her or recommend its prosecution where any current civil servant would have been prosecuted for the same conduct of a private email with classified information on it, private server. Now we have direct evidence, absolutely corroborated, of criminal activity by the vice, former vice president of the United States and his family, and especially one son, Hunter Biden. And the FBI wants to know now whether or not this is part of an influence campaign by the Russians to influence the 2020 election. If that is true, if that is what the FBI is doing, uh, it is so frightening and scary that it makes it almost impossible for me to believe that Christopher Ray can survive Election Day, whether the president wins or not. And 
I am so disgusted with the FBI as a former United States attorney. Uh, it's, it appears to me that Christopher Ray has decided that he has to do everything in his power to prevent the president of the United States from getting a story out about the coup d'etat that went on during his candidacy, his interregnum, and his presidency, and continues to this day. Uh, I just don't see how anyone with a brain can have confidence in Christopher Wray and the leadership at the FBI. So it brings the question that we've asked several times, why is he still there? Why has he not been fired? Well, you can't fire the FBI director now. It's, you know, right. First of all, I mean, he, never should, he never should have been hired. He was the wrong guy. All of us recommended against him. We were overruled because Chris Christie said he was the guy. Anybody who knew Christopher Ray had ever had business dealings with him knew that he was gutless, that he was a climber, that he was a careerist, that he was an institutionalist. He could care less about the FBI. What he, what he cares about is finishing his term and going on boards of directors. He is the worst type of person to have put in charge of the FBI, but he sits there. The president can't fire him now, and he, right. and he couldn't during, during the campaign. So why does a guy like Chris Christie recommend Christopher Wray? Get, take us behind the scenes here, because I think a lot of people are wondering about the president's hiring decisions, how they're influenced, and the constellation of people around him that often offer these recommendations. What are their goals? Well, let's remember who Chris Christie is. He was the former governor of New Jersey. And when he was investigated for Bridgegate, you will recall Bridgegate, where they shut down the, the bridges mm-hmm. between New Jersey and New York. Yep. Guess who Chris Christie's lawyer was? Chris Ray. He defended him throughout that. And he took possession of Chris Christie's telephone and never surrendered that telephone to an investigation by the New Jersey State Senate. He was rewarded for his loyalty to Chris Christie. That's all fine. By the way, there's nothing, you know, that's political loyalty. You want to help somebody who helped you, fine. But his, he is an incompetent. People have to understand that Christopher Ray is an empty suit. And if you were to quietly take a poll, an anonymous poll inside the FBI, they would all wish him gone. But it's, this is a political payback by Chris Christie. And the president, you know, he relies on Chris Christie, former governor, friend, and, you know, everybody says, hey, raise the guy. What does the president know? He's not a Washingtonian. He doesn't know anything about this place. He just listens to the wrong people. Happens every day. Yeah, there, there's also some talk about Joe Biden's son-in-law, uh, who is a doctor, Dr. Howard Krein, married to Biden's daughter, Ashley. He is currently advising the Biden campaign on coronavirus issues, but he's the chief medical officer at a firm called Startup Health, which is now taking on, you know, investing in coronavirus cures and treatments and things like that. And they also are involved with two China-based corporations in 2018. Uh, but the, So this goes back to 2012, actually, with Howard Krein and Startup Health and uh, Chinese corporations. So it just seems to me as if there's it goes for, past Hunter Biden in the Biden family. This is something that should be looked at as, as, as just a couple months ago. Listen, the entire Biden family has benefited from Joe Biden's vice presidential position. His brother got housing contracts in Iraq, multi-billion dollar housing contracts. He got set up with a company, doesn't know anything about construction or housing. He's making those things are still being built today in Iraq. The entire family has been part of this scheme. And, and, and you know, because of Hunter Biden's relationship with the Chinese, that if the, the Biden family is going to get involved in something, there's going to be some chop suey involved. And that's exactly what it's become. It's become a Chinese parlor game uh-huh. for the Biden family involving chop suey. You know, you know, you know, as you're describing this, this sounds like the plot of Arrested Development. You know that show, Arrested <laughs> Development? Yes. They literally yes. they literally built corrupt housing developments in yes. Iraq in that show. And I am keep thinking, yes. is the Biden family Arrested Development? Are you familiar with that show? <laughs> Uh, yes, and, and, and they are, in fact. They, they may very well be the basis of arrested development. Uh, the, the Biden family's grifterism, their uh-huh. pure grifterism, is well known in Delaware. It's just now becoming known to the American people. It, yeah. Is Joe Biden George Bluth? We need to get to the bottom of this. Thank you. Joe DeGeneva, thanks for leading us down that road. Thank I appreciate you, it, you as bet. always. You All right, 724 on WMAL. Okay. You speak the truth? Washington's mall. That is a simple statement of fact. 105.9 FM. WMAL, where Washington comes to talk.